Hi, my name is Tim Morgan and I am going to uh, just give you an insight into uh, distance learning course design and I'm going to uh, pose a question, is that your best? So at the end of this session I'd like you to think about how you would create an online, uh, an online course. I'm going to be showing you what I have created uh, or what I have used for used as an inspiration and some things that I think are useful um, but at the end of the day it's not what I think it's what you think so um, yes so that's the title of the session is this your best distance learning course design aspiration and reality and I think that um, we can always improve on what we're doing and it has a lot to do with the resources that we have um, and I think that that will probably come out during the Q&A session. So um, on, the, uh, on the far left we have a, um, a, a, a Moodle course um, which we, we run at Central St Martins. Um, so basically we're going to be looking at different elements that make up a uh, components of a distance learning course or certainly the ones that we run so we uh, we use Moodle um, in the middle we have a, uh, a video so videos are uh, very obviously a very common part of distance learning courses um, this one here is for the medical school and it uses a uh, green screen so uh, we're able to take the presenter out of the uh, up from the background and then drop the slides in behind him so I think that's a very uh, slick way of doing things and we'll be talking more about that a little bit later and then on the uh, far right we have a picture of our online classroom and um, I'll be talking a little bit more about how we integrate that within the whole kind of learning experience of our online teaching and during this session I am going to be using something called OBS, Open Broadcasting Software and in fact everything that you're looking at now is being recorded using OBS so this the fact that I'm in a small window uh, that my slides are in a bigger window that we have a logo top left um, so this is all sort of set up in, in OBS and it's something that I know that the Humboldt are very interested in using and already have begun to use so I felt that it was appropriate to use this for this, uh, this lecture uh, Padlet that is in the, 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 the icon in the middle of the uh, of the slide. Um, that is something I feel is very, very useful. It's been around quite a long time. It's a very versatile, versatile piece of, uh, I guess it's a social media tool. You can upload pictures, uh, upload video, up, or, or link, to, link to video, upload text, comment on people's posts, that type of thing. It's, it's used, I believe, quite a lot in education, perhaps more in education than anything else. Uh, but it's a very uh, very useful tool and I, I can show you how we're using that on the MBA program and uh, again as I mentioned uh, so on the right hand side we have um, uh, Collaborate Ultra, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and um, what the reason I'm including that in this session as well so we're going to have a, a live session with um, uh, to, to just to sort of run through how we use that and the training that we give to tutors um, so again there'll be there'll be more of that coming up as well later on so a little bit about me I uh, up until very recently I was working at Queen Mary University of London in the medical school and I was uh, responsible for the uh, all the digital resources so that would be primarily video and photography uh, video mostly in the form of lectures or clinical demonstrations and photography uh, mostly uh, for promotional reasons or taken in the hospital and I also I, 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 I still work at Central St Martins and I'm responsible for the design and the administration of uh, some of our distance learning courses I do that in collaboration with another uh, another colleague and I also wanted to um, uh, draw your attention to Andreas Vollmer. Uh, he was, I came across here about two years ago on an Erasmus exchange. I found it uh, enormously, uh, it was enormously beneficial to me. I met Andreas and his team 
in uh, the, uh, the media centrum and uh, he basically for a week he showed me uh, what, 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 what they or what you were doing in the Humboldt um, and I uh, ran a couple of workshops and it was just uh, very, very enjoyable. So uh, I just wanted to uh, mention that as well. Okay, now I am going to be using the word me a lot, I have done, and etc. Now, you'll have to take this with a bit of a pinch of salt. Um, the whole thing about a successful course design, implementation, delivery, is that it is very much a team activity. The people that you can see here, these are people connected with the, um, uh, with the MBA, but these are I'm going to use the word support staff or administrative staff. Um, there are librarians, there's somebody from uh, careers development, there are administrators, uh, um, learning technologists, um, and as well as this, there's a whole stack of other people that are also involved, but perhaps they pay less of a key role. Uh, so these are not the academic staff. Okay, so course design. Um, these are the five uh, examples that I wanted to look at. And the reason for that is that I feel um, it's good to look at commercial tools uh, or com commercial products. Um, it's good to look at improvised. So, so FutureLearn and Lynda.com would be both examples of um, commercial products. Um, TED-Ed is a commercial product as well, but it is, uh, it's a template that allows you to put your own information in. That's, uh, that's the image at the top. Um, and uh, playlists, YouTube playlists, that's a very simple, very accessible way to create, um, create content and, and, and kind of package it uh, for, uh, for, for your audience. So you can obviously upload video, but in the description you add text, you can add links. Um, so it, it, it's pretty basic, but at the same time it has a very low learning curve and it's uh, YouTube is of course um, widely used all over the planet. Okay, and again, just so that I don't forget um, the important uh, people in this whole process, that is the students. Uh, these are students on the CSM Birkbeck MBA, uh, now in the second year. This photo was taken when, well these photos were taken during their first year. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what kind of technology we're using. Uh, at the end of the day, these people have paid a lot of money to attend this course. They've got certain reasons for doing that, certain things they want to get from it. And it is my job, along with everybody else, to make sure that they get what they signed up for. And just so that there's a sort of a balance between uh, distance learning and face-to-face -face learning, all the courses that we run at Central St. Martins have, have both aspects. So I guess the, 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 the common term is blended learning. It's not a term that I'm particularly keen on, but it's one that's very well recognized. So um, this was the very first activity that the MBA students did on their very first face-to-face -face, um, day. Uh, these are shields, and these shields basically set out what the person's strengths are, their, and, and they obviously do this themselves, their kind of strengths, their weaknesses, what they want to get from the course, what they feel they have to offer, that type of thing. And this is uh, kind of some digital information. Um, so this was taken, again, during the first weekend. Uh, the students have a task to do. And that task, it's a trading up task. So you can see that uh, some of, in some of the pictures, the students are holding up a paperclip. Now that is a kind of a token item that they were given uh, to go out into the world and swap that for something else. And, that, and then once they've swapped it for something else, then swap that something else for something else. And so the idea is after two and a half hours that they come back, not with a paperclip, but with an item that they, you know, that they've traded up, traded this up with, and then what was very interesting was we then we were looking at the financial value of the item that they managed to bring back, and then we were also looking at the uh, the, the the value to society as well uh, for the item that they brought back. So it was a very, it was very. Um, 
enlightening uh, exercise. But basically these pictures, it's a mixture of pictures taken by myself, by the students, uh, using this uh, piece of software called Padlet, this social media uh, tool if you like, um, and students can upload pictures, I could upload pictures, uh, people could add comments, um, add titles, etc. Um, so if nothing else, it forms a great reference from uh, the first weekend. And here we are with um, uh, Blackboard Collaborate. So this is our sorry Collaborate Ultra. This is the um, this is the uh, online classroom tool that we use. Now, in this instance, one of the students, perhaps because of Brexit, I'm not completely sure, um, uh, an American student was unable to get her visa in time to come across to uh, take part. So we used the, it was a little bit of improvisation, but we used the uh, Collaborate Ultra, the online classroom, to allow the students on, during the face-to-face -face session, to communicate online with uh, one of their, one of the other people in their group. So this was a great example of technology as an enabler. And typically, um, resources permitting, uh, we record various aspects of the face-to-face -face sessions, face-to-face uh, -face weekends, and then those resources are then uh, made available to uh, the students later. These would typically be uh, student presentations, so generally for, for the weekend there's a, a task to achieve, uh, normally in a group, and then the group will then feedback that's recorded, uh, posted up on the course page. Um, on the uh, right of that is uh, Jeremy Till the, um, from Central St. Martins, and he is uh, giving a lecture. So again, that was something that is made available for the students uh, for later. And um, so this is just um, uh, about the, uh, the, the mobile, so we call it MyUAL. Uh, Moodle has uh, an app um, associated with it that you can kind of plug into. And with the development of the uh, of, of the, the Moodle course, we uh, we then check to make sure that it, uh, it that it is viewable properly in the uh, in the My UAL app. Uh, UAL is University Arts London, and Central St Martins is part of uh, University Arts London. So here we can see some screenshots um, as we look in more depth into the Moodle course. You'll be able to see that um, you know th these are sort of quite good representations of what the desktop version will present you with. So you have these kind of banner icons, uh, and then we use the, the tab display feature uh, within Moodle, uh, which I believe is a very kind of clear way for students to navigate. Tabs are, um, it's not something you have to explain to anybody. We're familiar with them with browsers, um, along with many other uh, interface developments. Okay, so now we're going to be moving away from the slides and we're going to be looking at uh, some sort of courses. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Moodle and then after Moodle we're going to be looking at some uh, commercial products. Okay, so here we go. This is the, uh, so this is what we're looking at the moment. Just going to check that this is working. It is. That's reassuring. Um, what we are looking at here is the MBA course. This is a 18-month uh, course run by Central St Martins in collaboration with Birkbeck University. So they're they're both sort of joint partners in this. Um, this is. I kind of just talk you through what we've got. This area here. Well, this area here is where the, the content is. And as the content is released, it will then appear here. Um, this here is where, this general resources area, this is where all the, well, in fact, let's just sort of dive in and take a look. This is where all the information is that you are 
likely to need, particularly when you start your course, but perhaps not going to need it at your fingertips all the time. So here we have a, a welcome video. This is how all the, the courses are laid out. So welcome video, uh, meet the team. So these are uh, all the academics. And if you click on the image, it will then uh, display all the information about that person. So here we go. Um, go back to the top, meet the students. So these are all the students on the MBA. Uh, and when you click on the person's picture, again, it will display information about that person. Now, what is very useful about this is that we have uh, tutors that are generally only teaching for uh, perhaps one unit or for one sprint. Um, and what that means is that they don't necessarily know the students, they don't know their background, their aspirations, etc. So this meet the students area is, is very useful for them. Uh, help and support, so again for students, and just uh, points them in the right direction where to go for, uh, for help, student handbook. So really all these things are what you would expect to find from uh, be provided by university, so career services, study skills, etc. So obviously the distance learning students have all the same access to resources that the face-to-face -face students have. And perhaps one thing that I should mention is the way that we integrate Moodle with some of the other tools. So perhaps if we go back here, I can best uh, explain that. So here uh, we use the Google Calendar. This is managed by Dylan, one of the course administrators. And uh, basically, this is a very simple way to distribute information to the students. They are able to, just by clicking on these headings here, they're able to find out additional information, get links to uh, uh, generally to the online classroom or, 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 or to other things that are relevant. Uh, so, so very, very useful. Um, if the tutor has a Twitter feed, then that's also displayed here. When we click on resources, we're able to click on Sprint 1 Team Working. So this is the Sprint 1 reading list. And this is done using Google Docs. Uh, it's a very useful way of doing it. Basically, uh, I, get the, I, I get the information from the academic, uh, and then I, I lay it out like this. And then it's passed over to the librarians. We've got one connected with Birkbeck, one connected with St. St. Martins, uh, May and Aiden, and they then link the, the, uh, the readings to this document, and if any of the links break, then they're in, they have the uh, access rights and the uh, ability to then just go in and make those changes. So it's an example of trying to not not to have uh, me, for example, to to be doing sort of everything. Um, there's another example that I'd like to show you of this, and this this does look a little bit clunky. Um, but um, here we have, uh, this, this covers all the lecture slides for Unit 1. And if we go in, so let's say face-to-face, -face, um, so what's great here is that uh, the uh, tutors are able to independently upload their slides as PDFs to this, this area here. And again, it's an example of uh, trying to uh, sort of keep a kind of like a make the design of the course appealing to the students, but at the same time, not make it unmanageable by the person who sets it up. Okay, so let's have a quick look at another course. Um, we'll have a look at um, MA Arts and Cultural Enterprise. And so again, a course run by, this, this is purely run by St. St. Martins. Now this is going to look very similar to the other course, uh, but nevertheless, let's have a look to see, ha have a look at some of the differences. Uh, what we have here, so because this, this is delivered over a 10 week period, uh, each, of these, uh, each of these tabs has 
uh, has a date and a week. Um, and again, it starts with a video introduction as well, a kind of a welcome and what is going to be covered during uh, this particular unit. Um, in terms of assessment, we, uh, we use Turnitin. Um, we do, well, we will be beginning to use some um, Moodle quiz elements, um, but up until now, it's really just been um, that the assignment has just been submitted uh, submitted by Moodle. Let's now have a look at uh, a MOOC, uh, a massive open online course. So this is from FutureLearn. FutureLearn um, uh, come from the same, that they're, uh, they're connected with Open University. I think that this is a, you know, it's a very nice piece of design in terms of clarity. Uh, the course is split up into six weeks and each week is split up into separate learning chunks. Um, and as you kind of move through this, it will, it, it will chart your, your progress. Um, there are also, it's a mixture of like PDF and video. And they also make use of the discussion board. So this is not a course that is, um, th this is not a course that is moderated by anybody. Um, so basically it's, it's sort of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, feedback and comments. So you're, let's see if we just go to, go to discussion. Okay, and then we go to comments. So you can see that. Okay, so you can see that these are all the comments on this uh, particular aspect of the course. So, I yeah, I, I, I just like this a lot. It, it also, as I, as I say, it sort of charts your progress. Um, I, I like its simplicity. I, I like the sense of progress that you, you feel like, like you, you, you're you making progress. And also, you know exactly where you are in, 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 the, in, in the course as a whole. So this, uh, actually before we look at this, let's have another look, It'd be more relevant to look at uh, the lynda.com example. So lynda.com, um, I think, let's see then, don't want, uh, uh, we don't need to come listen to this, uh, but, but uh, lynda.com do great how-to videos. And basically, um, so if we kind of scroll through, Hi, I'm we will see that looking to enhance. We'll see that um, we've got the presenter, and then we've got um, a screencast of uh, what, what he's kind of discussing. A very kind of simple methodology. Uh, one of the nice features is that uh, down here you've got the text, and that the the what's being said at that moment is highlighted in yellow. Again, you've got a very nice uh, way of sort of charting through your learning journey. And they've got thousands of these. Um, I use them for uh, learning software. Um, they're, yeah, they're, they're just excellent. Okay. So, uh, so playlists. So this is a, a kind of... Uh, a very kind of sort of cut down simplistic no cost approach uh, where you can upload material video and uh, if I just click on this example here right this is always kind of quirky because when I see this in the UK I get British ads when I see it in Germany I get German ads but but basically again um, uh, you've got uh, when I when I click show more uh, so I've got information about the video, uh, I've got web links, and again there are, there are kind of comments, uh, there's comments that can be, uh, people can add their comments and people can respond to those comments. 
so it, it, in a sense in, in a kind of a learning in learning terms it's it's quite rich yet it requires uh, very little technical knowledge and and very little financial uh, you know it doesn't it doesn't cost well, it doesn't cost you anything to set stuff like this up and uh, last but not least I just wanted to show you this because again this is something that that has no cost attached to it um, let's see if we just select this one here now this is so uh, TED talks uh, this so TED Ed comes from the people who uh, who developed TED talks and with this example here uh, you can use pre-created content that they have made uh, but you can use their template to add your own content so basically the way this works is it's this is the structure here uh, you watch the video then you have some multiple choice quizzes then you have uh, something that's kind of more of a, an essay type question really so the idea is that you, you think more about this and then there is a, a discussion discussion area now you need to log in in order to uh, to, to view and participate in that but um, and, and you can see you can customize this lesson uh, and 119 people have done that not only can you customize it but you can add your own video uh, you can basically start from scratch but use this template so again this is a this is like a no-cost way of creating um, quite a quite a nice uh, learning resource okay so now we are going to look at um, uh, videos uh, videos uh, I think are a very important part of distance learning courses um, the term flipped classroom is often used uh, in the context of videos where students will watch a video prior to the actual uh, online session um, and these are uh, just some videos that I have uh, created in the past rather than sort of click through to them I think I'll just use this as these screenshots as examples so with this one here uh, it is um, it's uh, done for the medical school at Queen Mary um, it's a lecture from a conference and here we have the uh, presenter in their own window and then we have the slides in their own window this is a this is a slide from the uh, from Kieran's uh, uh, presentation now here uh, we're going to skip this uh, this is the software that we're using right now um, OBS um, but I did want to mention these these are so these two examples here um, this one with Imogen and this one with Ben uh, this is using green screen this is a facility that we've only just got at Queen Mary and it's something that I completely underestimated how fabulous the results would be so here uh, Ben is filmed in fact let's just click through to this because this is this is great hello and uh, welcome to module six and let's see, just make sure okay good so let's see we'll move through to a slide okay so what we've got here is uh, Ben is filmed against a green screen and then using, I use Final Cut Pro uh, to, to de detach Ben from the green screen and then this is one of his slides. His slide was basically black text on white uh, with this kind of blue banner thing at the bottom and I was able to sort of lay that over a background logo of, of, of the Queen Mary crown and, and then I put this uh, additional uh, graphic up here but what that left left us with was uh, something that I think looks well it looks a lot slicker than the components I had to work with so uh, as I say I think that this is the way certainly in Queen Mary that we would like to continue to produce our um, our videos okay uh, so next is going to be the online classroom 
and uh, that will be using Collaborate Ultra. Okay, so what we have now is, uh, so first of all, Haida, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, what we have now is the online classroom. Uh, we use something called Collaborate Ultra, and I'm just going to give you an insight into how we use that. So um, I won't talk you through these sort of uh, simplistic tools step by step, but we'll be referring to them in the slides. So the first thing I'll do is just load the slider. And the reason that I'm showing you this particular view is that uh, normally when uh, an online recording has been made, you don't get to see how the online record, you don't get to see the nuts and bolts of it. But actually I'm, I'm running a screen recording software at the moment, so what you're seeing is exactly what the, uh, what the lecturer sees rather than what the student would necessarily see. So I am going to go to share files and I've already preloaded my slides. Okay, so Collaborate Ultra. Okay, so uh, I would say that Collaborate Ultra is a, it's a fundamental part of the student online experience. Um, we, Moodle is important in terms of um, submitting assignments, uh, students being able to find the learning materials, etc. But it tends to be, in a way, it's kind of a little bit one-dimensional in terms of its um, asynchronous learning. What we have here with Collaborate Ultra is, is uh, synchronous learning. So the students and the tutor are together in the same location, um, and that tends to make a much richer learning experience. So what we say to the tutors is that um, in order to teach in an online class, they really need to have done, they really need to have participated as a student uh, in other online classes. Um, if they don't do that, they've got no idea some of the pitfalls that people can easily fall into when, for example, just delivering a lecture, uh, which tends to be the default for anybody who hasn't, uh, who, who hasn't um, delivered any online learning before. I would say it is different um, in terms of how you would ideally fragment the, the delivery process. And if we just go to the next slide, you can see a lesson plan, which is something that we've been doing for about six months now. And it's, it's a way to try and avoid this default delivery mechanism that is, is sort of ingrained into most people, really, that come from an academic background. Uh, so what we have uh, in this example here, uh, you can see what is going to be delivered, how long that's going to be delivered for, and uh, the type of approach it's going to be used. So whether that's sort of breakout rooms or polls, or it's just uh, kind of lecture delivery. So we're not saying that lecture delivery is a bad thing, but it needs to be taken into the context of, of, of like the whole learning experience, if you like. So, uh, now basic features. So these are, um, these are uh, features that are offered by Collaborate Ultra. They tend to be, they're, they're relatively sort of simple and um, it, it doesn't take too much training really to, uh, to, to have the tutor be able to sort of do this independently. Typically we have a learning technologist present at the beginning of each online class. And um, that could be just for, let's say, 10 minutes just to do some troubleshooting. Uh, but actually, as the unit progresses, um, the learning technologist might also stand back if, if it's agreed that it's not really required. Um, so in terms of orientation, so tutors receive uh, uh, training um, in terms of how to use the online classroom. And of course, as we said before, the idea equally um, have an orientation session and this is part of the students welcome pack that goes out and prior to the very first online class that we have uh, we meet up normally for about half an hour and it's really an opportunity uh, for me to introduce myself to the students if I'm running the session uh, but more importantly for the students to um, test the technology so can they actually log into the system how do they chat how do they raise their hand um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's important that everybody 
feels confident prior to the first online session, otherwise people tend to get quite nervous. Uh, particularly because our students are master students and so they have been out of they may have been out of education for you know 10 plus years um, and this whole kind of online world uh, might be a little bit foreign to them okay so with this slide here we've got more advanced features um, i would say that um, whenever we use breakout rooms then the uh, the learning technologist is always there to support uh, because they seem to be the most cumbersome they're a very powerful tool uh, but they are cumbersome in terms of management particularly if you put people into their own rooms if you allow the system to to, to, to randomly put people into rooms that seems to be less problematic okay. ah okay and uh, on the topic of polls uh, here is an example uh, of a question that we have so we, we referred to this earlier on in the presentation so what was the name of the social media tool that enabled staff and students to upload and display notes, and photos, and more? So uh, this is a question that I will be asking Haida. So one, two, or three. And in order to do this, I'm going to have to bring up the poll software, uh, the poll feature. So again, the students wouldn't see what, what we're seeing right now on screen. Um, this is really for your kind of benefit to see uh, the workings on in the background. Okay, so here we go. Three choices: one, two, or three. So, uh, Haida, would you like to uh, to make your choice, please? Okay. Okay, one, and uh, I am going to play safe as well. So I'm going to go to one as well. So right now you can't see the responses, can you? No, I can't. Okay, so I'm going to click on show responses, but now you can, presumably. Yes. Great. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And now I'm, I'm simply going to end the poll. Great, so thank you very much. Okay, so we're coming up to our final slide now. Um, and that, uh, okay, so that is about breakout rooms. Um, so I would suggest that we, I don't sort of go into this in any depth. This screenshot really gives you an indication of, of, of what they can be like. So uh, a little bit like a, uh, like if, if you're uh, using um, Google Hangouts or Skype for Business where you can have multiple people all come together. Uh, you have all the same facilities that you would have um, in the regular, uh, the regular classroom, if you like, as opposed to the breakout room. The breakout room is just an extension of that, so you can chat, so you can talk, etc. Okay, great. So thank you all very much for your time. Um, and uh, there was actually a question that I wanted to ask you, which was, and this is really sort of something for us to uh, discuss. Um, after this session, and that is really, uh, so these are the things that are important to me when I'm creating a, an online classroom, or the, these are the elements, and this is the way I would, I would design it and the way I would administrate it. But in actual fact, it's not so important what I think, um, it's important what you think. So during the next Q&A session, I'd like us to look at how you would design an online course. Thank you very much. <laughs>